You know, one of the most unfortunate things that happened on YouTube in the last decade hmm. is how so many people shit on motivational speakers. <laughs> Really? I didn't know that happened. Well, I think that people say, oh, you know, like uh, literally um, Anthony Robbins, the greatest motivational speaker, arguably, of all time. I think just like uh, life coaches before that was even a thing uh, says, I'm not your guru or something like that because he's kind of countering the cliche of the motivational speaker. Now, I understand where it comes from because there's people that are motivational speakers. I remember watching one and you you knew he hadn't succeeded at all. <laughs> and what he was trying to do is succeed at being a motivational speaker. The reason I say um, that's unfortunate is because I love being motivated. And uh, the early days of motivational speaker were from people that did succeed at something. Mm. And the one that comes to my mind for YouTube is Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm. I mean, he had already succeeded in the wine um, business for his family, you know, building it from like, a few million to 60 million and then on YouTube not only creating his own you know like influence through his content but then building the agency and being the go-to for dope campaigns or whatever yeah. and then over time I think his like raw raw positivity motivation um, some people and th there's always people will judge it right but the reason I'm even bringing it up is because I needed my motivational speaker this morning <laughs> And I, um, so for anybody that's never heard this, I always rate my motivational level on a scale of zero to 100. And this is not for everybody, but I'm trying to be a hundred every single day. I basically say I'm redlining this thing, right? Neutrally. <laughs> What's it called when you redline, uh, uh, your, your, um, your car. your car. Yeah, you're redlining. You're revving off the limiter. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm pedal to the metal. I'm trying to get that little whatever thing. <laughs> right? Um, I like to live like that. Hmm. But the reality is I don't every single day, all day. And so zero to 100. Zero is the worst, worst. Right? Like I would never even get down that low. Um, for me, depression is like 50 or 60 because I, I do get seasonal depression. I've been depressed in the past. I yeah. still get it. And so this morning I was feeling like 80 mm. and I was like nervous. I was like, man, I don't want to be 79. Yeah. And I think that's like the first lesson. And this is why I use a scale of zero to 100. You have to recognize when you're not feeling motivated like and and know where you're at on that scale because even though i want to get to 100 i just want to make sure that i stop myself from going farther back mm. and then i want to get as high as possible like for me being on camera at 100 is the best everybody probably can relate to that especially creators but then the question is well how'd i get up there um so i was at 80 this morning had some like you know very serious discussions with Judy. Um, not anything bad, but again, like just things that we had to talk about mm -hmm. and it wasn't motivating me and I was laying there in bed and I'm sure everybody has had this moment where you didn't want to get out of bed or you had to do things and you're like, oh, like, you know, I just, I, I'm not feeling that right energy, but I know how important it is right now to get to that energy. And you and I today literally had to record this podcast. So I thought, you know <laughs> Not what? Not to mention two videos, right? <laughs> two videos. Um, I mean, worked on a couple other videos. I'm going to be doing a podcast later with my friend. And then guess what? I, <laughs> I'm i going to do another vlog and just vlog for the t crazy stuff. So I have to be on, yes. right? I want to be on. But the question is, how would I get from zero to where I'm at right now, which is 100, okay? And this started way previous to today. That's one other thing. I'm going to give you guys tips, by the way, on how to get motivated right now, get motivated in the short term and then the long term. But the story continues. So I get up out of bed. Number one, I just got out of bed. Like being in bed doesn't help anybody, okay? <laughs> uh, unless maybe you're praying. But for me, I was like, I just got out of bed. I had to get moving. Went to the coffee machine, made me and Judy some macchiatos, okay? Just get some caffeine in me. But one of the things I do is I don't consume any content. So that means no Twitter, mm. no Instagram, no YouTube, no podcast at all. I already have a hard enough like morning with the girls and then like wanting my attention and getting things ready for the morning. But that's one of my rules. Nothing. Okay. Um, and the second thing is I'm trying to get to the gym. Mm. 
move. So a run would do it. I don't have to go to gym. But so to this day, I wanted to run at the gym. And so I got started. I got my stuff into the locker room. got onto the track. And my plan was like, you know what? I know every single time I run six miles, it always gets me into the right mindset. So guess what? I did my stretches. I got going. um, And I was just about to run put on some music mm. so I don't consume any content right from videos reels all the way to podcasts but music the right kind of music and so I had a choice do I want to listen to the Top Gun album right get some <laughs> maverick energy respect or, or do I turn on Pandora and do some Hans mm. Zimmer inspirational playlist I was like you know what I I love I get pumped up by Top Gun but I was like I'm gonna go with Hans Zimmer I'm not kidding you. I click on Hans Zimmer. The first thing that Pandora pumps up, because it's all random, at least if you do stations, was Maverick's theme song. <laughs> no in way. Top Gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn, this is crazy. And then that really got me revved up, right? I love that. And so guess what? I start running. Okay. And it's kind of slow, but like I'm already getting a little bit more motivated from the music and the fact that I'm moving. And I'm starting to get into the right mindset. I pray at the beginning. I go through a certain prayer. That's just for me. And by like, I don't know, half a mile in, I'm on it. I'm like, dude, I'm going to crush this six miles. I finish my prayer and then I just got into mindset stuff and then starting to think about the videos I'm going to create. This is how I prepare. This is why no distractions are important. I'll tell you why turning off everything is important later. But then at mile two, I uh, pull my calf muscle. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) So like it easily could get derailed, right? What's interesting, I was already revved up so high at that point. I was like, I'm not going to let this thing. So like I finished my two and a half miles. Um, I did some other kind of running stuff. And then I just went into the the weight room. And so I did some weights, which actually gets me revved up even more Mm. because it's just so much adrenaline when you're lifting weights. And I wasn't at the point where I was limping. So um, I could have ran the whole six miles, but I probably would have injured my calf seriously. So I was like, you know, don't want to do that because what's my goal today? Not only to get motivated but get motivated to shoot things long story short went through the whole workout felt amazing continued to listen to music still wasn't looking at my phone by the way on top of it i had uh do not disturb on too so Mm -hmm. i didn't get so if you're listening to this and you text message me i didn't reply that's why you guys okay i'm trying to get pumped up trying to get that red line 100 going I meet with Austin and guess what? We talk about the content we're going to create, talk about the week or whatever. And um, when I go to shoot my intros on my DJI Osmo, first take, boom. Second take. Perfect timing too. Perfect, right? (laughs) Cadence. Um, We re-recorded one, but guess what? It was even better than the second one. Now I've got options. And then uh, I'm rare because I'm all about doing two, three, four, five takes until I get it. But I'm at 100. And when I'm at 100, man, I'm in the flow. And that's that's kind of the reason why mm. being motivated as a creator is so important. And this is why this morning I thought, I know as a creator who's done this for 15 years, and to a certain degree, I've created a little bit every single day since. I can't, there's only a handful of days where I really don't create anything because my wife and I, daily vlog Mm. and we're always just creating content even if i'm just on the other side of the camera like the creation process i love it but i also understand even me who's a seasoned professional content creator have those moments like i did this morning i could have easily went from 80 to 79 to 70 and just stayed in bed and watched netflix and done nothing at all now when you're a father and you're married you have certain responsibilities and priorities so that's already a motivator that's a whole nother discussion we can talk about at the end but i want to share that story because of certain things you can do right now anyways any thoughts there like uh what's kind of like before i get into kind of like what you can do now the short-term uh, solutions and long-term solutions for being motivated to be able to create um have you ever been unmotivated before oh yeah come on <laughs> who has it uh but no for real yeah i mean I, and I, I like the way that you're outlining this in terms of the things you can do right away in the short term and in the long term because the story you you tell me right now is the product of some long-term changes but really it takes those day-by-day changes in order to keep it at 100 if you're aiming for 100 right 
Uh, and I also love the discussion that you talk. I hope we get into the idea of kind of being in the flow creatively. Uh, because even recently for me, like I had a period there where I wasn't posting videos and a lot of that was because I had just kind of burned myself out, right? I had gone, I had lost my motivation there and I was not necessarily thinking pessimistically, but I just hadn't made the changes that I needed to individually. My mindset changes in order to get to that point. And I think that one thing I imagine you'll probably get into based off of the story you just told is how the action leads to those mindset changes. And, and uh, I'd love to hear more about what you think you can do right away. Uh, and, and as and then kind of go into the other ones as we go along. Yeah, you said it. I mean, th- this is a way I break it down, not only into what you can do now, what you can do in the short term, what you can do in the long term to stay motivated, but even within there, three things, right? One of them is how do you change your mindset and perspective? Mm-hmm. How do you change your physical motivation, mm-hmm. right? And then how do you change um, the action? Because even if you're completely depressed, unmotivated, there's still an action that's happening. Even the act of inaction is the action, but it's the wrong one, (laughs) right? So me laying in bed, one of the choices I could have made was maybe just roll over and just go back to sleep. (laughs) Open up YouTube and open up YouTube (laughs) and Netflix and watch all the wrong things, right? Um, Or kind of make justifications like why I'm going to be lazy or the action I made. And this is why I made a point to say, get out of bed, Mm -hmm. just literally getting out of bed. And then the next step get to the the espresso machine, make myself and Judy a macchiato, then get myself to the gym, right? And then even in the gym, I just start walking. Like Mm -hmm. the days where I'm the least motivated ever, I know how important exercise is, but if I don't feel like lifting weights or running or crushing six miles, I will just straight walk Mm. until I get a little bit better. I go from the 80 to 81, that's, so, a really, that's a really good metaphor, too, because it's kind of like stopping the bleeding first, right? You need to change your habit, right? In that mm-hmm. case, going from laying in bed, sitting around, not doing anything, to literally just walking. You have to yes. walk before you can run, right? And, and you, every moment is a choice. That's kind of how I look at it when, yes. I, when I'm trying to get motivated. Every single thing. And it's like I ask myself in real time, is this something that's going to make me less motivated or mm. more motivated and it doesn't have to be crazy things so let's just break it like go, get right Please, into I it would right love that. Yep. um the first thing i do to get motivated in terms of my mind is i say positive words it's so <laughs> cheesy and cliche but in my darkest moments and i've had those when i was depressed i would literally just say the most positive words right Motivated, 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 motivated. Wow, really? Good, good. Yeah, huh. I mean, it's so elementary. I love that. But I'm trying to fight the really negative words in my mind. See, the, the danger of being depressed or unmotivated is when you let all the really bad things keep flowing in yeah. and it's just bouncing around in your mind. So I literally fight it when I'm really struggling by saying those words. Mm. It could be something like, Greatness, greatness, great. I just say it so much until literally there's no room for anything else. <laughs> so that's baseline, right? Like, literally, and then of course, the next level of that is positive affirmations. Yes. And this is where it starts getting cheesy, but it totally works. You say, like, I am greater than this, mm. or I, I'm so great that I'm going to accomplish this. So that's just for the mindset. Remember, I break it down to three things m- mindset and perspective. Um, physical actions and then the a- like actual actions and remember all this is in relation to being a creator can i say something about the mindset yes. really quick um i was actually just listening to we're both seahawks fans right love pete carroll pete carroll had a huge incredible run with the hawks making them a winning team you know however many seasons out of the number of seasons that he coached right and one of the things that he talks about in the book uh, that, that I'm listening to is op- the power of optimism and how basically every top performer as an athlete has an optimistic viewpoint, right? But it's not a naive optimistic viewpoint. They're not saying this is just going to be easy because I'm great. They're saying this is going to be hard, but good things are still going to happen because I'm so skilled, right? And they talk about how that is actually, you know, you can think about optimism versus pessimism and which one is more realistic. And they say, in theory, both of them are really realistic ways of looking at things, but optimism is almost always the more realistic thing. You end up the real realist because you create the outcome that you want. And the affirmation that I loved from from that book that they said is that something good is about to happen, right? 
and it's good and it's about to happen because I'm so skilled to make it happen. So I love that idea. Yeah, and um, I I want to bring it back to my scale of zero to one hundred. So I I was saying I like to redline it. I want to be at a hundred when I'm going to create content, right? Like. I don't think it's realistic for me to be 100 24 7 for the rest totally. of my life because yeah. life happens. Shitty things occur. Yeah. And I know it's okay to be at that 60 or 70. But when it comes to content creation, you want to be as high as possible. But when I talk about these positive affirmations and these positive words, I'm just trying to get from 80 to 81. Yeah. That's the other thing that this is one of the mistakes people make trying to go from 80 to 100 <laughs> and if you don't get 100 you fail so guess what happens you go farther back down you go yeah. like 79 or same five stop or the seven. bleeding first stop the bleeding first and this is why the easiest way to do this now you know beyond that for me it's prayer hmm. when i pray i'm also doing that i mean the most powerful you know like uh, like being is god right so for me personally some people call it meditation. Yeah. Some people call it positive affirmations. Yeah. I just use the word when I, like I, I was showing you the darkest, but like when I'm in a better mood, maybe I'm like at a 90, I'm trying to get to hundred. I just start praying, I right? Like I, I'm in the right mindset where I can have that conversation discussion. I just use that, like that, like archaic. Good, 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 <laughs> good, good, good. So the other word, which I won't even say <laughs> is even in my mind. Yes. I just say it over. Okay. Second thing. Um, um, that I do for my mindset is listen to music. The power of music is pretty incredible. But when we're in that deep, dark place, we kind of forget that we could just turn on some music. It, and, and then we're, we're just in the quiet, but it's not quiet because in our minds, all those crazy words and whatever negative uh, like thoughts are there. So you flip on a, a, some good music, and that's what I did when I went to the track and I started running. It pushes everything else out of the way. Mm. It, it's crazy how a good song will just make you feel good. Mm. There's no rule for which song, by the way. Mm. Now, I would definitely stay away from like something emo, something that's going to bring you <laughs> a dark place. Like I'm trying to get to from 80 to 81, right? Or in my case, 80 to eventually 100. So some good music. It's, and remember, we're just talking about things you can address right now about motivation. Um, okay, let's talk about physical stuff. Yes. Move. So I talked about moving from the bed to like downstairs um, and then getting to the gym. And the most basic thing I can do is just walk, mm. literally just walk, especially outside in fresh air. One of the problems when it comes to content creation is a lot of it is done on the computer, right? Or writing your script is done again on like a Google Docs or Word or whatever. And you're just sitting. You're just sitting. That's like the most unmotivating thing, just sitting there, right? Yeah, stagnation, it's literally. Just, mm -hmm. Exactly. So you just want to move. You want to get off your butt, or in my case this morning, out of the bed. And so just walk. That's what I say. Now, the, the next level is like actually work out. Yes. So maybe a light jog. Uh, whatever it is that you like to do, I would do that. And I'd suggest to anybody else to do that. Because... That alone might not seem impressive, but when you combine the walk with listening to music or the walk with positive, then you just start getting the juices flowing, right? And you start getting going. Um, and, um, and the third one too, when it comes to something you can do right now is the action related to content creation, which is mm. create something. Like literally, what is something you can create right now, right? And... That doesn't have to be any one thing. Some suggestion would be like, I would write down a dream I have and a goal I want to achieve. Let me just write it down, right? Um, and you're like starting to create something. Yeah. If you can't do a YouTube video, then do the uh, do the like tweet, right? <laughs> yeah, do an Instagram post, yeah. whatever you can. Even if it's just going to a YouTube video and replying to comments, like just just do that. If hopefully you don't have negative comments, right? Like <laughs> that's a whole another story. Like put that on filter, or whatever. But like you have to get into the mode, but you don't have to do the big one. I think the big takeaway here for the what you can do now is more the having a realistic perspective. Remember, yeah. I said going from eighty to eighty-one, not eighty to a hundred. 
you don't have to fix everything right now. Yes. You just have to get a little bit better so you're going in the right direction. This is why that third piece of it, the action is important because guess what? Momentum starts building. This morning, right? I started walking on the track. It didn't immediately sprint, right? And remember, I <laughs> exactly. like I eventually like almost pulled my calf muscle. And I had to do something else. But I had enough momentum from beginning, right, to walk and to move and to run that I was already at probably at that point 88 or 90. And it didn't matter that I just pulled my calf muscle. I just went right there. I was like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to now lift some weights. And then I eventually got to 100 and then all that happened. So having the mindset of just like getting a little bit better. And these are things that anybody can do but getting your mindset and perspective right that's that's something you can do right now physically moving right like just moving um and then uh the the, the last thing is creating some kind of action in relation to content creation i think those are literally the most important things the other thing i would say too this is going to be uh counterintuitive i guess but it works for me turn everything else off. So I talked about don't consume anything, right? But also turn off all distractions. Mm. Sometimes we're, you know, I think you could probably talk about this because you love Steve Jobs. <laughs> he only had one outfit, right? Yeah. Bandwidth fatigue or decision fatigue. Yeah. And I think as creators, this can happen. Our creative energy is eaten up by other tasks, by other things. Like actually, my friend Anton's in here, right? <laughs> and he says, like, this is uh, email is the ultimate. <laughs> what is it? Someone else's to do list. Yes. Yes. I love that phrase. That's my favorite. Yeah. Yes. He says email is somebody else's to do list, right? <laughs> so you don't want to get a to do list. Turn off the email. Don't even look at it. So that's the last thing I'd say. Like all those yeah. things I just said, right? To get you moving, right? Uh, to to create something, but even more say, so get the right mindset. Well, that first piece about the mindset can get ruined by someone else's to do list, or maybe someone tells you something negative. Not even trying to tell you something bad, but again, like it doesn't help this this space that you're in to tr get a little bit better really important just to turn off the notifications um do not disturb is on because all that i did this morning to get to 100 so yeah. that by the end i could get there yeah creating space for yourself it sounds like is a big piece of this right and i love the parallel parallelism between just getting out of bed and just starting to walk just one step at a time right and just saying one word before you start saying your phrases, right? Or creating one small thing before you create your long video. It's all the same thing. Like you said, something manageable, something you can do. Um, like one thing I like to do is literally journal, right? I will just write down my thoughts and then they're out of my head. Like uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite phrases is that your brain is not a good whiteboard, right? <laughs> get the, get it, uh, get that whiteboard out, get it out of there. And then eventually, you know, you have space for the other things. So you can do that through the things that you talked about, focusing on the things that you want to do or by uh, having it out there or whatever method works for you. But I love that idea of just doing one little thing to start right away. But yeah. what are the things that you can do in kind of in the medium term in order to uh, maybe make it more sustainable rather than having to do this Band-Aid things every single for day? For sure. I actually want to add one more thing oh, before please. we get yeah. to the medium term because you just remind me of something about the to-do list, the power of a to-do list. There's two mm. sides to this, right? True. One, the act of having a to-do list and marking something off. So that mm. is helpful for motivation when you can just mark something. So yeah, it's like a physical sit, action. That exactly. You can do. So yeah. I was talking about the creative part, but even if just marking something off, also just like you said, when you're by yourself, you've got no notifications. You might still have thoughts. Maybe some of the thoughts, like for me, some of the thoughts that make me unmotivated is something I know I have to do that I haven't done yeah. or I procrastinate on. Put it on your to-do list, and guess what? It is okay to put it off. If right now what's most important is creating content, yeah. right? The world's not going to end. Yeah. That's another thing too. Don't be afraid to like turn off your phone as long as you tell your wife because she <laughs> might get like <laughs> questioning the like what is going on. Tell her what's exactly happening, right? Judy knows. But um, the world's not going to end. That's You're so not going to miss anything unless you're a day trader for stocks, right? <laughs> like as a creator, guess what? YouTube's gonna, still going to be there. If your video is a little bit late, it's going to be all good, right? Yeah. What we're trying to do is address the, the creative motivation to make that video, to yep. create that content. Um, 
And um, having that perspective is that second part of the to-do list, right? Mm-hmm. Put it off and then and then move on to the thing that you need to do right now. Definitely. In the medium term, right? The short term. This is beyond what you can do right this moment. One of my favorite things to do is rework your timeline, right? Your schedule, your routine. So I literally just did this um, about two weeks ago. I realized... I wasn't hitting 100 as often I, as I wanted because I typically feel the best after what my workouts. So instead of working out in the afternoon and the evening, which was just a result of like my life as a parent, it was just easier that way because of it. I just started committing and prioritizing working out in the morning. So now instead of going right into the studio, which by the way, I did go into the studio and I did the practice of creating my notes before I went to the gym. I I forgot to mention that, (laughs) but I didn't stay in the studio, right? I went to the gym afterwards. So I work out now in the mornings. There is, so this is, this is why it's not something you can do now, but over time, as you work out and you be you, your body is functioning at the highest levels, do you know there's actual like chemistry, like chemical things happening after yeah. exercise? Endorphins. Endorphins yeah. happen. And so I know those, I mean, in fact, like a drug will get me from that 80 to 90 or 295 and in correspond. So part of the way I do that for myself is have a routine that works. Yeah, it's like taking those smaller things that you just talked about and weaving them into a practice that you can do on a regular basis, right? Those things work in a band-aid situation, but if you make them a habit, well, then yeah. <laughs> then your motivation becomes a habit. I just describe what works for me, yes. but think about your routine and your schedule and ask yourself, is this the best like, like order yeah. for me to be able to create some people they create the best like my friend matt makes his videos at midnight that's when he like not only uh shoots stuff but then edits stuff for me like the best stuff usually comes late morning or early afternoon mm. and i'm on it like i was at 100 to, you saw me when i was recording i right? did <laughs> like i'm just hitting these hooks hitting these titles and that's my point why this is so important to think about it it's not just the motivation but getting yourself to the point where you can do all that yes. and then i think a routine and a schedule is important also building into your um routine and schedule some bandwidth so the ability to work on your notes or prepare mm. for a video, yes. to actually shoot a video. People kind of um, overestimate what they can do in a busy schedule. When it comes to content creation, I didn't mention this before, you can't force creativity. Yeah, It really, it, it's, it's even the people that create a lot and you think like, oh, they're so disciplined. You know, my wife is, I always talk about her. She just carves out a certain part of the day to always edit her videos Wow! and nothing can touch that. In fact, I'm part of that process. I make sure that's all protected, right? She's not disturbed. She has some quiet space. I light uh, incense, right? Like I'll make her coffee because I know how important that is. If this is somebody that's been doing for 15 years and uh, edited 4,000 videos, <laughs> how are you the beginner, right? Or somebody aspiring to be a creator, maybe you're full-time, but you're like trying to get to the next level, think you're gonna just squeeze it in for the one hour. True. That's just not how it works for most people. Some people can do it, right? But I think when it comes to content creation, building out that bandwidth, not only for the content creation part and the preparation, also just like, so your, your bandwidth isn't eaten up by other things. This is why for me, I would highly suggest this. Don't do the emails or the calls or meetings before you create content. Mm. Now, for my friend Matt, it works like at night. But I will tell you, there's some times where he's MIA, doesn't <laughs> respond. I already know what's happening. Yeah, He's getting into the flow. Yeah. He's getting into the right thing. Because I'll, I'll tell you this. I, I'm sure he won't mind. The wrong information, the wrong news, the wrong text, and he will get derailed. And yeah. he'll tell me, he's like, hey, you want to go out? It's like, I'm, I, I don't even want to make a video anymore, <laughs> right? So this is something that's important. So the routine, the schedule, how can you work it? Um, any thoughts on that before we get into another you know, like short-term solution for motivation? First of all, just just flatly agree. I think that that's something I would add, actually, that you mentioned, uh, like with Judy, right, is the power of space, right? Not only space in your schedule, but literally physical space, right? If you if you have the privilege of being able to create a space where you can go to be creative or have space like 
you came to the studio in the morning and started writing your notes. I think that that's a really powerful tool that is underestimated by a lot of people. And for me, that is in the context of just my room. I carved out a little space in my room where I do my writing, right? Uh, you know, it's not like the, a giant studio where I can go to do and shoot videos and things like that. But it helps me when I'm in that environment to know, it's kind of like telling my body, hey, this is the time to sit and just, you know, get your thoughts out. Just get your thoughts out. So I would add the power of the importance oh, of Oh, you're really space. good at that too. Because sometimes <laughs> I can't ever get a hold of you, right? And I know you protect your say respect. Yeah. People have this assumption like you have to respond right away. You do not have to respond right away. If content and being a creator is what's important to you, right? Exactly. If you're somebody that's a networker and that's part of your job, whatever, totally different ball game, exactly. okay? Um, we're talking about creators here and people that want to create content. On that note, and then I get to the next point for short-term solutions for not being motivated. Also, being disciplined to create that moment in your schedule week to week long term mm, yeah people think like you know what i'm gonna I, i'm all about batch production but there's magic in the week to week for example yeah you could like me and sean when we do video influencers we used to dream like we're good at batch producing we could do like five to 20 videos in one weekend or something like that and we're good for two or three months it was a different kind of business model <laughs> and work back and we didn't have a lot of competition we're just like doing but we we're like man what if we like took a whole month in europe and we just like filmed all our videos yeah it's possible, but guess what? There's a reason it doesn't happen and why I think hmm. we underestimate the week-to-week -week, um, committed point because you learn a lot in the process. Mm -hmm. Like this goes back to content creation, right? From week to week. And also there's this improvement that happens. So we're talking about motivation, right? Mm. Say you, um, you commit from here on out for the next 52 weeks. That's a whole year. On Fridays from 12 to 3, I'm going to create content, Okay. And say you've been at that 60 level, you're kind of not feeling very motivated and you know you need to be 100. Guess what? I told you right now you might go from 60 to 65. And then when you're filming this week, maybe you're at 70. And then that's not really like hype, right? Like whatever. But guess what? The next week you might be at 75. Yeah. If you're combining all these habits and you're set in a schedule and then you learn a little bit more, right? And then over the course of two or three months, guess what? You're getting closer to 90. This happened to me. Mm. I, when I was at my darkest during the pandemic, I was not at my 90 to 100 for content creation. I was like at my 70 to 80 oh, wow. for, I mean, like, I think if I was honest with myself for years, right? Wow. At least a couple of years. But I still created content. Mm. I actually film stuff that, guess what? No one's going to ever see. <laughs> it's never going to see the light of day. In yeah. fact, with Anton, who's in the studio right now, right? It's part of the process. As I'm helping him with this podcast, they're like, hey, turn on the camera. They're like, what, what are you going to record? I have like, like, dude, and I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll look back at it and upload it one day, right? Because in my mind, I was like, yeah, this is 90 or 100. But if I'm really objective, it might have been 80. Mm. But that practice of doing that will get you out of these holes. And that actually goes to more long-term stuff, right? But my point is this. When you're making these schedules, don't create... Like say you, you, you haven't built out this protected moment in your schedule and now you're going to add one. Don't add like seven hours on a <laughs> Friday. If, how are you going to rearrange everything? I'd rather you add one to three hours once or twice a week for the next 52 weeks, then do this crazy thing me and Sean want to do is like an hour in Europe, right? Like, you know, they just, it just, there's something about the, the little bit, a little bit every single week over the long term that's way better than the massive amounts of change, right? And that, that's like where motivation can get the best of you, okay? Yeah. Uh, so I just put that. Um, the, the other thing I'd say in the short term that you can do for motivation is be around the right people. Yeah. Now, you can in the moment be like with my, I'm lucky because I have my wife who is also a content creator and I can, you know, tell her about it and then like she can get me into right mode. But I think that this is something that's going to happen over time. Start hanging around 
other creators. Start hanging around other people that are also in it with you, either in your team or in your niche or just on the platform with you. You know, mm. one of the most powerful things that happened during the pandemic for creators was Clubhouse. Mm. And all these creators going on Clubhouse, literally hanging out and talking to each other for hours and hours and hours. Even the best creators that you already think don't need it, we're doing it. Mm. There's this synergy that happens. So this doesn't have to be massive groups of people. It can just be one other person. Yeah. I mean, I know that you and I, yeah. Because we're in this weird phase where we're starting new channels together. And that's probably motivated because guess what? We have the same conversation. Yeah. Even at the highest levels, Mr. Beast talks about this. There was like a year or two where he was masterminding with the other people. Even when they were getting almost no views or yeah. 100 views, there is power to it. And guess what? It helps with that motivation when you know somebody else is in the fight with you, whether it's in your own business or just in the same industry. That's amazing. And, and I like that. I, I'm assuming we're kind of making the transition here to the long term. Um, but I love the comparison or the idea of the week to week, right? Because I think that gym comparison that we started out with is a really good one, right? You wouldn't go to the gym and for a month say, I'm going to do all my hardest workouts for a month straight and then not work out for the 11 months of the year at that point. You wouldn't get the results you wanted. You need the consistency to build that muscle over time. And the same thing goes with your brain. Same thing goes with your motivation. For sure. Um, and uh, the last thing I'll say in terms of short term, right, in terms of like helping your motivation is doing something not related to your content, but is fun hmm. or maybe a hobby. See, sometimes the, the easiest way to get motivated is to do something that you find joy in. Yeah. So for me, like one of the ways I got through those periods where I wasn't creating as much content was gardening, mm. right? It's just what it's, it's like. It's like medicine for your soul. Yeah. And that's for me personally. But uh, what are those hobbies or sports or things that you haven't done in a long time? See, this I think a lot of creators are definitely going to relate to. When you first started in your niche with your genre, whatever your content is, you were probably doing other things that made it so that the videos turn out a lot better. Mm. But what happens as you succeed, you start building a business, you might have employees, you might be doing other things. And then so the amount of time you're spending on those fun things, whether it's related to your content or not, start going on the, you know, like uh, the back burner, right? They don't become a priority. And you didn't realize that was part of the motivation, <laughs> yeah. like creator, That's was true. those those things that you used to do. I know like one thing that you do is like you like to go hiking, yep. right? For me, Being like nature, working yep. out is that thing. Mm -hmm. And so if I, if, I've never done this, by the way, this is probably one of the secrets for me to create content, even one of my mm. darkest, I've never not worked out. Mm. I've always worked out consistently, at least once or twice a week, at least for the last 20 years of my life. And so if there is one thing, so for me, I've understood this, but for you, the creator out there that's like waking up every single moment and you've lost all motivation or worse, you're like depressed, ask yourself, is there something that I'm not doing that I used to do? Like a good example of this would be Judy again. I am mm. just trying to give it a different niche. She was a makeup guru. She hates that term, right? But doing makeup looks, hairdos, what did she do at the very beginning of her YouTube experience? She would go shopping for makeup. She'd go to the drugstore and play with new products. Mm. So if there was ever a time where she wasn't feeling creatively at that hundred level, I literally just say, just go to a makeup store. Yeah. Yeah. Spend 200 bucks, whatever. And she gets makeup sent too. See, this is what I'm saying about creators. As you get successful, things that you used to do organically don't happen yeah. because it's happening in different ways, but not in the way that's important. Yeah. My point is this, go do something fun that helps you get creative again and then gets you motivated. And you'll find that uh, you'll slowly creep back. Cause I bet you, if I looked at your life, right? Like if I had a magic magnifying glass <laughs> in your schedule, whatever, and you're not motivated, I bet you it's all consumed with meetings it's consumed with pointless phone calls. Uh, you get texts and DMs and Slack notifications about things that have nothing to do with content. And you're probably just doing busy work. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing. I believe, and this is why like, I'm, going, I'm doubling and tripling down on creators, hmm. is because 
as a content creator, that's the most valuable thing. Everything else should be delegated or should be secondary to creating content. And what's interesting is you, as you create more content, right? And you start seeing some success or you like get some engagement, positive feedback, guess what? You get a little bit more motivated. Now I'm going beyond any of these tips. I'm telling you the little secret of the one small step leading to the bigger step leading yeah. to the giant leap. The reason the most successful creators just keep going like skyrocketing because like every time that video hits and they get all those views or all those positive comments and they see the subscribers going up, guess what? They're super motivated to do the thing. And so there's the other people. I think this is something we'll leave to the end. It, the problem is when you're going downwards, mm, right? Yeah. And that's why like sometimes when things aren't going as planned, you're not getting views. That's why you go to square one, right? That first little thing you can do right now today to stop it from going from 80 to 79 to 60 to 50. Anyway, sorry I went on that rant. No, that's I, I love to hear it. That's what we're here for, right? Uh, but it goes back to what you talk about with space, right? You, we're, we're creating space for for those things, and you and I talk a lot about the importance of play, right? And in a lot of ways, not only play in the actual creative process, but the play that you can draw inspiration from, or that you can use for your healing, or that you can use for your to to reset yourself, or to use to stop the bleeding, as we've talked about. Um, so that's all I, I'll say is that creating space for that play, for your passions. I think uh, ultimately having an environment that makes you feel better, generally speaking, and secondly, is going to inspire creativity, yes. right? All that stuff will help motivate you. Now, there's bigger things. I'm not a doctor. I never went to school for this stuff. Um, I'm not even going to try to pretend like I'm a psychologist here. But there's bigger things, and this is going towards the last section, right? The long-term things that are going to take a lot of stuff. Maybe the reason you're not motivated is because you're depressed. Maybe the reason you're not motivated is because you've got trauma. Maybe the reason you're not motivated is because you've got a bigger issue. Part of that thing that got me to 80 out of 100 this morning was that bigger issue. It was mm. just weighing heavy on my mind. You have to address that eventually. Yeah, you have to get help for that. Yeah. you have to like do something. Um, for me, I'm like Elon Musk. I'm uh, <laughs> like on my uh, what do you call it? My, on my uh, my what do you call it? The thing the when you die <laughs> the, the 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 stone the, the, the headstone <laughs> the headstone right on my headstone like coffin. Feel, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna tombstone. Say, never, tombstone. Yeah, tombstone. <laughs> I'm never never got therapy. Yeah, right? I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> but my therapy right is talking to other people. The mm. reason I bring this up is all those things I said you can do, like listening to music exercising, I didn't mention this, but like eating good, right? Being in the right environment, playing, doing all the things. Those are substitutes. Those are like band-aids. The bigger problem has to get addressed. See, the thing is, and this is where like, I think motivational speakers fall short. Mm -hmm. They only have an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. They only have an hour. Okay. And they're not doctors. And even if they were like, you have to spend the time to fix that thing. Yeah. It's like a boat. Hmm. See, a boat, maybe the engine's not r running well and you put some, you know, better oil in there or better fuel or whatever, and that's like running bad. That's like the music, right? That's like the, the exercise or whatever. But if there's a gash on the side of that <laughs> boat and the water's flowing in, guess what? You have to fix that eventually. Yeah, the bucket's not going to help you. You do, right? <laughs> the one thing I'd say about that, and again, this is not as a pseudo doctor or like trying to fake like some like lifestyle coach doctor. I'm just saying like, Make a decision that you're going to fix it, and it might take a while. Yeah. In the meantime, though, you can still do these other things. Yes. Little by little, you're going to fix that gas, right? Right now, you're going to put some kind of foam that's going to fix it. It's <laughs> temporary. It's just going to right. – I'm talking to creators right now where you need to create something right now. Yeah. Right? You – maybe can't create today, but maybe next week after you do a whole bunch of things, you can start creating. Those other things, when you're free from that, right? When you not only address it, but you heal it or you fix it, you get beyond it, like in a healthy way, guess what? You'll be able to redline at a hundred. Like, and that's kind of what happened to me forever. I couldn't get to a hundred, right? Like no matter what I did, I was going through all these things. I had to address that one big thing, right? And yeah. I was able to get from... I was like maxing out at 89, neutrally here knows. He saw me at like sub 80 forever, right? I couldn't get out. And and neutrally, would you say you've seen me at 100 again more often? Well, yeah, definitely. Right? Mm -hmm. 
I had to fix that big gash mm. in the side of my boat. Okay. And the reason I kind of I'm ending this, and there's a, a whole bunch of other stuff, and we might talk about this. Leave it in the comments or DM me, right? If this like kind of like uh spoke to you. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter how good your engine is and how you know like pointy the tip of the boat is or whatever that gash is probably the thing that's killing your motivation the most yeah that's very true and i believe that most people live in denial of the big gash in their life and try to do all these other things i was giving you exercises or tips to get motivated today right go from 80 to 81 right hopefully to 90 and eventually redlining like me at 100. And you know what? That's when you're in the flow, in the creator, and you're just boom, 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 right? But guess what? That gash is no longer there. Like yeah. it got fixed up. Yeah. And so what I would say for those people, while you're like getting through your day, getting through your week, and you're running your business, you're creating content, just do whatever you have to do to heal yourself, you know, I think this is really important for creators to say you're worth the time to spend time on yourself because as a creator, you're everything. Like yeah. if you have a business where creating content and you're the face of those videos, you have to, you have to be on, right? Because what happens if you don't fix a gash? What if, what happens if you go from 80 to 79, eventually 60 and lower, 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 you don't make videos and yeah. everything else hurts from yeah. it. You have to take care of yourself. I know this for a fact because I did this for my wife. Mm. My priority for 15 years before I started, you know, really creating content seriously for myself was to make sure that she was protected from everything else mentally, physically, her time and everything. I do believe like if there is one thing I can give credit to myself is in addition to her unicorn powers and her crazy <laughs> discipline and her skills that she gained over time is man. We, and you were part of it, right? Austin, right? Like you remember like trips to all, uh, Africa, I do, right? <laughs> Liz, she was editing in Africa oh, yeah. after we went on a safari to these kids that we're like supporting a charity with it was amazing and back. Right. And we're seeing giraffes off. And, and this wasn't the pretty safari. This was like, everything's <laughs> dead kind of sorry drought. And we would come back at 10 at night, 11 at night, this multiple nights. And yes. guess who was editing at midnight trying to connect to the worst internet <laughs> in the middle of Africa to get up the thing? Was Judy. It was. Right? And so this isn't just like rah, 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 being cheesy and cliche advice. This is coming from actual experience. How did we upload Every single day for over a decade, when everybody says, oh, you can't, it's not sustainable, you'll get burnt out. Why did we not burn out? Because at the end of the day, my job was to make sure Judy as a creator was just always at the highest level possible. I don't know what that number is because I, I, you know, I never asked her about this, mm. but I believe she was almost always over 90, right? Because we all took care of her and she took care of herself too. And also, she's a badass motherfucker. Like just <laughs> don't want to discount that. Any last thoughts there? I can't top that. I just 100% agree with what you said. I, I think creating, again, I'm going to go back. I feel like I'm just reiterating the same thing over and over again, creating that space in order to know what you have to do in the long term. It's all those little adjustments along the way that will get you there. Address the things that need to be addressed long term, short term, like fix up the schedule, have the right people. But... If in this moment you want to start getting to the path of 100 and redlining, don't go from 70 to 100. Go from 70 to 71. Do what you can right now to help go in the right direction, not the wrong direction. And if you do that, I promise you, you'll at least be a little bit more motivated and eventually be so motivated you won't even stop, even if you pull your calf muscle on the track. <laughs>